Hello, my name is Doug Dubay with Recasens USA, and today I want to speak with you about textile thermal properties, in particular about outdoor textiles. Now to start off with, uh, I, I do want to tell you that I'm not a scientist. I'm not a true expert on some of these matters, but I have been in the uh, textile industry and specifically the outdoor textile industry for a lot of years. And over the years, I've, I've learned just a, a lot of things about the benefits of outdoor uh, fabrics. And so I thought maybe I'd share some of those things today with you, and in particular about the thermal properties of textiles. They can be really, really um, useful in, in controlling your uh, environment. And so we'll cover that today. So let's get started. And we'll get started with a little science here. Um, you know, uh, solar energy comes in different wavelengths. And all this solar energy is coming from the sun. And, I found this pretty cool graphic about that sort of shows the different wavelengths that the sun emits. And on one end of it, you've got the real long wavelengths, the low energy uh, wavelengths. And I can use my pointer here just to see the energy level starting at the low energy, which is your radio waves, TV, FM, AM, radio waves that you might be familiar with. Um, that's your low energy. And then you get into uh, a little bit higher wavelength and that gets into your infrared, which is heat. And then just a, a very narrow range of the spectrum of wavelength is actually your visible light. Uh, for all the different colors of light. And then as you move up into higher wavelengths, you get into ultraviolet. And you're familiar with the UVA and UVB and all the uh, issues that they can cause uh, with skin damage. And then beyond that, you get into other things you've heard of like X-rays, uh, when you wanna take a picture of your bone structure or even gamma rays. So this is sort of all the different wavelengths, radiation, uh, solar energy that's being emitted by the sun. And here's a little graphic that shows uh, the sun's energy being cascaded down towards Earth. And then uh, a more limited uh, map of the range of radiation that we're going to talk about today. And why that is, is that our Earth is an amazing design and where our atmosphere blocks most of the radiation uh, that could reach the Earth. And the only radiation or primary radiation that filters through to our Earth's surface is the uh, UVA, UVB, the visible light, and the infrared or heat energy. So that's what we're going to talk about today is uh, these wavelengths, this radiation, this energy, and how it interacts with surfaces and to be more specific fabrics uh, that we have. And when all these radiations are cascading and pummeling our earth, uh, there's basically three things that can happen with that energy, with those wavelengths uh, is the wavelength can either reflect, bounce back away from the surface that it hits. It can be absorbed into the surface or in certain items, uh, some of that energy, be it UV, light, heat, can actually transmit through the object, or in this case, textile. And here we have graphics showing like an angled awning where the sun's energy is coming down, hitting the textile, and it can either reflect back away, it can be absorbed into the textile, or depending on the construction of the textile can transmit through. And then for vertical applications, like a screen here, same thing, the sun's energy can reflect back, it can be absorbed into the textile, 
or it can be transmitted through. And by changing the construction and color of the fabric, you can control the ratios of, of these different things happening, reflection, absorption, and transmission. Visible light and infrared, when they hit the fabric, uh, some of it can be absorbed. And when it does this, what happens is that energy is converted into heat and it actually heats the fabric and warms it up. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. And you just need to use the fabric so that it's doing what you want and providing you a, a benefit instead of uh, uh, harming the situation. Right here, you see a vertical screen that's being installed outside of the building, outside of the glass and protecting uh, the room before the sun and that energy actually goes through the glass. Um, this heated fabric, when the sun, sun's light, visible light, infrared uh, energy hits the fabric and uh, heats it up, that heat eventually dissipates. And you can feel that heat radiating away from the fabric into the air surrounding that textile. Now, if the textile is outdoors, like in this diagram to the left, that heat easily just dissipates into the atmosphere without any problem. But if, let's say, a screen is installed on the inside of the window and there isn't a lot of glazing on the window, that sun's visible light and infrared energy can pass easily through the glass, hit the surface of the more opaque screen and convert into heat energy. And then that energy in infrared heat can't escape back out of the glass, out of the room, and it's trapped inside of the room. Depending on the situation, that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. Now, when it comes to thermal properties of a fabric, color really matters. And as you know, by looking at it, uh, every fabric reflects light differently. And that's why the fabrics are different color. Your eye is perceiving different amounts of different wavelengths radi radiating back, reflecting back towards your eye. So when you've got a dark color like black, a lot of the light uh, spectrum is absorbed and not reflected back to your eye. When you get into the lighter colors here, a very high proportion of the visible light waves are being reflected back to your eye. So this same thing applies to uh, infrared waves too, and different fabrics are reflecting and absorbing the light and the energy, the radiation at different uh, rates or quantities or proportions. So think about a real world situation. Uh, think about wearing a black leather jacket and a white microfiber shirt on a sunny hot or cold sun. Only one you'd rather wear over the other, depending on the environment. Uh, I'm making this recording here in the middle of February in North Carolina. And uh, just a couple days ago, it was a beautiful sunny day. And at the end of the workday, there was still a fair amount of sunlight out on the front porch. And uh, I threw on a, a black parka and, and sat out there and got some fresh air. And even though it was only about 45 degrees out, that sun's energy hitting my black parka and absorbing into it and then radiating, dissipating underneath the jacket against me kept me perfectly warm and it just felt wonderful to sit out in that afternoon sun with the sun on my face and the warmth of that jacket from the sun's energy that had absorbed into my jacket and then radiated, dissipated in both directions, back out into the atmosphere, but also in 
underneath the jacket to keep me nice and warm. Now, of course, if I was sitting on that same front porch in the middle of August and had that park on, I'd be wilting, I'd be sweating bullets. On a day like that, then I'd want to wear that white microfiber shirt and I'd feel a whole lot better. And this applies to so many different things and it's just not the color, but the composition of the uh, thing as well. So on a hot summer day, think about a microfiber shirt being exposed to the sun. Uh, you could go out in the sun and the minute you're exposed to it, you can feel that shirt heating up. But the moment you step out from that sunlight, that shirt would cool off and, and be comfortable again almost immediately. Uh, think of something else like a, a resin chair that doesn't have a real dense plastic but uh, uh, was exposed to the sun. When you first sat on it, it'd feel pretty hot if it was a hot sunny day. But if you pulled that chair in uh, out of the sun, in a matter of minutes, it would be tolerable. Uh, and then on the, the other end of the spectrum, think of a freshly paved road uh, with black pavement on a, a hot, hot summer day uh, that's been baked in the sun all day long. And the heat just builds up and builds up and, even when you get to the evening, uh, hours after the strength of the sun's gone, you can still feel the sun's energy that it absorbed into that pavement and now is radiating out as heat. So uh, it's a combination when it comes to textiles of uh, the color that you're dealing with, but also the thickness and the density and the breathability of that textile as how it's going to uh, create heat and how it's going to dissipate that heat as well. So when you're choosing a fabric, you, you really need to keep that in mind. And think about it now when it comes to our shading products like an awning. Uh, if you choose the right fabric, it's going to really make that outdoor environment more comfortable to, for you to live in. And uh, here we have a picture of a retractable awning uh, in a patio situation. And on a very hot summer day like this, a white fabric like that is going to reflect a lot of the sun's energy. And another beautiful thing about this is with a woven uh, fabric like this, uh, there's small holes, gaps between the yarns and the weave uh, that allow any heat that does build up underneath that fabric to rise, because heat likes to rise, rise up through the fabric and away from you. And then with a retractable awning, there's no side wings or screens on the side of the awning. So air is easily able to travel out the sides of the awning as well. And then the other beauty about a retractable awning is that it's adaptable or dynamic. So uh, if it was a cool, sunny winter day, uh, like I described uh, earlier in the presentation, you could retract that on and get it out of the way and enjoy the full warmth of the sun. And then later in the year, when you've got a day when it's 90 degrees and sunny, you roll that awning out and, and you've got the shade from it and maybe a cool cross breeze and you're, you're comfortable as can be. So uh, choosing the right fabric uh, in the right construction and color can make a, a huge difference in, in the level of, of comfort, thermal comfort you have uh, in an outdoor living space. And the positioning of uh, shades, roller shades, uh, makes a huge difference as well. And here you see two primary applications or locations where you can use screens. One is an exterior application and the other is an interior. And the way you use fabrics sort of needs to be very different between the two if you think about it. Uh, if we take a look at an interior shade here, as the first graphic shows, you've got the glass on the outside than the screen on the inside. 
that sun's energy is coming through the glass, hitting the screen, and then it can either reflect out, it can be absorbed, or it can be transmitting through further into the room. Now, in this picture here, you see a light colored screen being used inside the glass. And this is a very common application because if you think about it, the sun's energy is coming through the glass and with a light colored textile, there's more reflection going out, more of the wavelengths of visible light and infrared reflect off of that fabric and back out into the exterior without turning into heat energy. Now, if this screen was a dark color, a much higher percentage of that sun's energy would be absorbed. And then that sun's energy heat would dissipate inside of the room and it couldn't make it back out of the uh, glass and out of the room. So you could warm up the room uh, a lot. And on a hot summer day, that's not good at all. Uh, that's gonna increase your uh, energy bills and, and, and decrease your level of comfort. On a winter day, it, it might be okay. Now, if we do the reverse in this graphic and apply the screen on the outside of the glass before the sun reaches, you can see the dynamics are completely different. The uh, sun's energy can be reflected, absorbed, or transmit through but that absorbed energy is now outside of the building and can easily be dissipated into the fresh air. So a lot of times when you have screens on the outside like this diagram or picture shows, um, it's a dark screen. And that's a beautiful combination because when you do that, if you retract the screen, in the winter, you can let the full strength of the sun's energy come through that glass and warm the house. If you drop it down, say in the summer, all this, a lot, the majority, vast majority of the sun's energy is being absorbed by that screen and then dissipated out into the fresh air before it ever gets into the home. And on top of that, being a dark colored screen, your eye sees through the fabric much easier than with a lighter colored fabric. So you still have great visibility, even if it's a fairly tight weave of fabric. So as you can see, uh, by positioning your fabric in different places and using different colors, you can have a huge uh, effect on the level of comfort and visibility um, that you achieve. Now, all these uh, statistics, uh, uh, information about uh, the solar properties of the fabric are quantified and listed. And this is very common uh, for shade fabrics. You've heard of shade factors and they all the time talk about reflection and absorption and transmission levels for those fabrics. But the same properties can be measured to a, a, an awning fabric, a woven acrylic too. And even though you don't have the visibility through the fabric, a lot of the solar prop properties vary greatly from uh, one color to the other. So if you look at some of these fabrics on this chart, I know it's sort of mind numbing looking at all those numbers, but we'll fo focus on a line. And, and what you have here at the beginning is the thermal factors. And if you look at a color like white, you can see uh, the level of transmitted light going through, reflected light, and absorbed light. And it sort of proves out what we were talking about and what you would suspect. So uh, with, with white and an acrylic fabric, the fabric, because it's such a light color, it's highly translucent. And a lot of that light comes through the fabric, just sort of glows through the fabric and, and leaves it bright and cheery underneath the awning. But also, since it's white, you see that light, all those different wavelengths bouncing back to your eyes. 
the big majority of it is reflected out as visible light. And the same happens with the infrared heat reflected away from the fabric and very little of it is absorbed. And that's why these light colors don't heat up like uh, some other colors do. So if we go down the chart here to the other end and look at some darker colors like hemp beige and linen tweed, you can see that only a small percentage of the sun's energy, light or infrared, is transmitted through the fabric. So it's darker underneath the fabric. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the environment you want to can create. Uh, and then also reflection here. You see less is reflecting, and that's picked up by your eye as a darker fabric. And then look at this, the absorption. It's much higher. And what that means is that that fabric, when that sun's energy is hitting it, be it visible light or uh, infrared is absorbing into that fabric and that means it's turning into heat. So that affects your level of comfort under the awning. Now for a retractable awning where it's open on the side and a breathable fabric, that might be okay. You know, if it's not extremely, extremely hot and you want it to be a little uh, darker and calmer under the awning. It can be easier on, eye, on your eyes. Uh, that might be the right fabric to go with. If you're talking about a fixed frame patio awning with wings on the sides and drop curtains or some obstruction to the air from side to side, uh, on a hot day, it might just get too warm under that awning and you might want to move up the chart to a, a color that uh, absorbs less of the sun's energy and would be more comfortable underneath. So by having this information in front of you, you can change the sales process or if you're a consumer, the selection process into something more than just a matter of aesthetics. Now you're considering performance and comfort. And with this kind of information here, you can make an informed decision about what color and what type of fabric is going to work best for your specific situation. It's really great the way you can use fabric and color to really control your outdoor environment and your thermal heat gain uh, between the fabrics you have to select and these adaptable, retractable dynamic shading devices you can just accomplish so much more and have so much control than some static metal canopy or uh, louvered shade that uh, can never fully retract away or some permanent structure. So anyhow, I, I hope you found that a little bit helpful, uh, learned a little bit. And uh, next time you have an outdoor project, uh, or you need to shade a, a room, uh, this will help you with your selection process. Uh, next time we get together, I'll talk about fabrics again, but this time I'll talk about the visual properties of textiles and outdoors. Thanks for your time and attention. We'll speak with you again soon.